So far we're on 9th Street and uh, actually Whitley and 9th and this is what we ran into, a uh, total roadblock. Uh, water is obviously swallowed the street. Just it's like totally it. Or, negative. I mean, yeah. Farmers they lose all their money. They, they yeah. The they farm, so they get it. So There's going to be a lot of people out of work too. Yeah. Lots of people that are has offered me a half shot of pistachio moonshine. Oh yeah. Thank you, man. Well, appreciate it. Yes, no problem, dude. What is this? P pistachio, pistachio moonshine. So I guess these these are all good. I don't know if I see any cows though. I don't know if they uh well, i heard they had to relocate yeah i don't know if they relocated the cows or not but i don't see any flooding in this area so i guess they're good there's actually no water in sight as of this moment and we're like on uh, i don't even know where we're on let me see we are on we're four miles away from uh corcoran so the last avenue was avenue 30 136 I think we're about to reach 144. So we're in between that. And we'll see right now. This is actually where I worked right here on the high speed rail. The high speed rail that goes from, I believe, Sacramento all the way down to LA. I swear I saw a picture online, bro, that this whole place was flooded. So I don't know if that's true or they pumped the water out or what happened, but I swear it was this place because when I seen it, I was like, dude, that is where, where I was. I have yet to see any water really but we'll see right now we're four miles away from corcoran i guess we're not gonna hit corcoran because we know that the water is not in corcoran it's surrounding corcoran so i guess we'd have to hit one of these avenues and see where the action's going on at but i heard that high-speed rail project that they're lending out their equipment to help build the levee even higher so so we're gonna see that. But I swear, this is the intersection that I seen that was all flooded. Like I said, I don't know if, it, I guess it wasn't this intersection, but I thought it was, or maybe it was and it, it cleared up, I don't know. That right there, so if you point that way, that's the uh, prison of Corcoran. And that, I know they were concerned about that getting flooded. So I wanna say that the water is probably uh, west of here, in that direction. So we are in uh, Corcoran now. We just pulled up into Corcoran. This is, uh, we're gonna show you a little bit of the town. Show you around, see what you think. It's actually a pretty cool town. It's like a very, gives you like a, I don't know, like a, a old town feeling. Like Western. Small, kind of. yeah, like a small town. Like we're on Whitley Avenue, about to make a left. Go into, this is like the main, uh, I would say Strip, Whitley Avenue, go down. Then we have, you know, buildings on both sides. Like I said, they're a little old. They look like they're old. I think that some of them are, are um, redone. Yeah, everything, they got everything here. But yeah, this is the town. Uh, they got a Dollar Tree, it looks like it's brand new. They have a Rite Aid coming up. Uh, this is the only hotel motel that they got here that I stayed in. And look at the houses real quick. How how different they are. I don't even know what style you would it would be, but Corcoran High School. Which is right here in the corner. But yeah, I think if we go down uh Whit Whitley Avenue, I wanna say that that's where the flooding starts, or that's where you can see some of the water. Right. Alright, so we've reached our first roadblock. I think so I want to say that's right I want to say that's where the fucking water's at because it looks like it. I, yeah, I don't know. Hey guys, we're here at Talari Lake, the Ghost Lake, as everyone says. And if you guys want to follow me. 
We are on, I believe, Whitley Avenue and 9th. And this is where the water has, has came up to. It looks like, a, like what would you say, like an apocalypse, apocalypse type thing? Yeah, dude, when I saw that uh, street sign, I was like, whoa. This is yeah, uh, from what I heard is this is nothing. This is not even like the beginning of it. I heard that we have water coming down for the next, I believe until, I wanna say they say June or July, even into August, I've heard. I know they're building uh, some levees. So that way, cause Corcoran is literally like, not even, I wanna say maybe a mile from here. Uh, that's when the town actually starts. So there's a couple of levees here um, that they're building and they're trying to build it higher. Uh, I don't see any work out here though. So I don't know if they already built the levees to, to where, you know, where they want it or, or what, but water is obviously swallowed the street. There's water for miles behind me, uh, 15 miles from what I've heard. We shot up the drone. We're able to see there's water going miles that way, miles this way. And I've heard that this lake in the 1800s was actually, I want to say 1900 uh, square miles. I'm not sure, but I know it extended from Bakersfield all the way up past uh, Sacramento. So that's a huge ass lake. So we're here, we're finally out here. I've been wanting to get out here. We're gonna keep doing some uh, coverage on this. This is just day one. This is where we're at. So maybe we could do like a mark or something or or kind of just see, I guess you see that uh, sign. that sign right there, the, uh, the arrow with the stop sign. Yep. So we are about, I don't know, a good, I would say a good 30 to 40 feet for sure from there so in the next couple of uh months or next month or whatnot we'll come back out here and we'll see where we're at from there hopefully we're not you know i don't know because this is kind of like a weird story where it's like you i kind of want to see it grow <laughs> yeah, but at the but same time you know it's kind of the people who live, live here and who this is their their lives and especially the farmers who they this is how they eat it's how they survive it sucks for them you know so like the guy who pulled up some guy just pulled up on us and he said i asked him if he was a local he said yes I asked him if he wanted to do an interview he said he said no hell no <laughs> he didn't want to be yeah he doesn't mess with the media he said he says that they twist their story and this and that i wouldn't consider myself the media but he doesn't know that anyways who knows if he's a farmer maybe this was his land maybe he's checking on to see what we're doing i mean we can't really destroy it it's fucking underwater i think he's seen us from somewhere either over there or over here somewhere he just wants to see what we're doing but yeah so it sucks because i want to see it grow imagine just okay so just picture this imagine this lake became the biggest lake how it was right then i believe it was the ninth bi biggest lake in the united states so imagine this lake came back and imagine we were able to go jet skiing boating imagine there was fucking like whatever houses and you know and just I don't know places to fucking chill and eat and whatever you know go camping and, and stuff like that so in a way it would be amazing to be able to do that but at the same time obviously it's killing crops it's killing trees it's killing uh, the farmland it's killing people's uh livelihood hopefully you know it doesn't reach corcoran that that is where it would be messed up because people who actually live there it's actually a real town yeah i heard they were uh, worried about the schools because it's getting really close to all the schools well yeah i showed you the corcoran school yeah, we passed yeah. by the high school which is like i said it's probably like a good mile from here so yeah it's about a good mile from here corcoran high school if it gets any higher um yeah it, it would definitely take swallow corcoran which is not really a big town you know um it is a bit it's weird because there is a lot of people there but it's not a bit a huge city like we're used to like la it's not like a you know a santa carita or a or, or a fucking you know a riverside or whatever it's n not anything close to that big but it is has a lot of people so it would suck to see that get swallowed up um but other than that like i said it would be fun to imagine to pull a boat out go fishing jet skiing uh just hang out because it gets really hot out here like i said i worked here at high speed railroad last year and man it was about 103 and it was humid and hot and if we had this lake i'm sure we would have jumped in it so <laughs> yes, but here come on follow follow me real quick let's just go over here real quick and see see the water 
So if you see, yeah, and if you see this, look at all this hay. So either, you know, this was, I don't even know where it would come from. Uh, Cause I don't see any barns really, unless it's underwater, which I don't think it's no, really it's that deep that yet. But I wish I could tell you the facts as far as like, you know, how, how bad it can get. I don't know if it's bad for us, you know, eventually. I don't know if it's gonna cause any like, uh, because I know obviously the farmlands, it has a lot of chemicals or whatever they spray on the, on the uh, whether it be their trees or their crops or whatever. So I know that this water is obviously, you know, taking that in. It's gonna be like uh, in the Simpsons, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, with like the, the fish with three eyes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know yet what that is looking like. I heard this water will be here for two years, but like I was talking to Altoy on the way here, it could actually be here for for a very long time because what happens if we get another snow year like we did this year and that same amount of snow comes down next year so that two years is actually going to be extended for maybe four years and then if it happens again the following year then it's just an ongoing thing so this lake right here has potential to never go away or you know at least in the next four or five six years so maybe we should take advantage of it maybe we should you know do something like i said but at the same time i don't know the facts on if it's safe because of all the chemicals that are put into the earth into the ground into the trees into the crops you know i don't know how safe it is just like the salt and sea yeah maybe maybe the next time we film danny will be <laughs> stroking through the middle of the yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe like i'll totally say it uh, maybe next time we film, I'll be backstroking through the fucking uh, water and shit. You'll see me fucking... You guys didn't know, but I'm a fucking fast swimmer, oh, so... Oh, dude. Michael Phelps, who? Michael <laughs> Phelps right here. So you might see me deep in the middle, scuba right there, diving. over there, bro. Yeah, you might see me doing something in this water, man. Maybe next time we come out with a boat, a raft. Oh, shit. Like I said, that I'm... That would be crazy. But you know what? I don't think it's that deep yet. Yeah, or I don't think yeah. it's deep at all. I, I heard that it's only uh, about... I don't know, uh, three, four feet. Do you hear that rumble though? Yeah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> they got the Loch Ness Monster over Dude, there. Dude, you guys can't hear it. Well, hopefully you can, but if you can't hear it, it's like a deep, deep rumble that we just heard. And it's almost like a, like, like the ground was about to shake. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that, that was. Yeah. All right, guys, we're here on the, uh, I want to say the North end. We were over there. If you want to point the camera, we were like literally miles. I want to say at least a good. Yeah, you could see the building that yeah. we were driving past. No, no, that's not it. That's not it? No, we were way past that. No way. Yeah. We were like at least 10 miles, 20 miles that way. There yeah. are fish. Yeah, so come on. We'll show you guys real quick. Altoy was exploring this way. Just real quick though. There's so many damn gnats and flies and yeah, there's a bunch of bugs. I don't know if they're mosquitoes, gnats, going in your nose, everywhere. So if you guys come out here, look at that uh, that whirlpool. Oh, shit. Oh, that's insane. What the fuck? <laughs> that's cool. So uh, back to what we were saying. Altoy was uh, exploring over here, and he said that there were fish. And that's what we were talking about over there. Yeah, I was really curious. Is what, them. you know, he was asking me if there was fish in here. And I was going to tell him that there probably is fish because of where this water is coming from. So it's coming from upstream from an actual, you know, river. And where? Oh, shoot. Okay, so there's a fish right there. He's obviously dead. And then you got another one over here, no? That's Yeah, it's probably from him. Probably his uh, other half of his body. There you go, guys. There's fish in this lake. Um, we were talking though also about. Okay, let's let's see if there's any over here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we're talking about how. What are the effects that from the pesticides and the things that they spray on the uh, trees and and the fields and all that? Um, what are going to be the effects of this lake, right? And. I mean, I'm not saying that that is from all that that's in the ground, but that could be a reason why he's there dead. So come on, let's see if we find any more fish. We're going to end up building an ecosystem that was not here before because none of these birds, I'm sure, were not here before. There was no water. 
to support them. So I'm sure a lot of these birds came from, you know, from the rivers up, you know, up top where, where all this water came from. There's ducks, you know. So I'm sure that there's going to be a whole new, a whole new ecosystem, you know, soon or if this lake stays around. So uh, I had a theory on, on this, right? Before any of this even happened, uh, I had this theory for a while now. And I believe that um, our deserts, you know, are, you know, because a lot of California is like really dry. It's like a desert, right? Uh, even the farmland, we keep it like this. We keep it green and all that, right? If it wasn't for us, it'd be just a desert because it's really hot. Like I said, it's 100 plus out here. It's, it's, it's not somewhere where, where things like this live. So um, I believe, I said it before, that everything's gonna the world is gonna kind of like reverse itself it's gonna kind of like switch positions so i think i believe like this year in the desert it was so green if you guys are not from the desert or you guys didn't visit the desert this year was insanely green like i've never seen it that green ever and it was insanely green this year and i believe that um if we keep going this way that the desert is not going to be a desert anymore it's going to be you know, it's going to be more Greenland. It's going to be more, you know, uh, foresty, whatever you want to call it, you know, more trees, more, more green, more water, just like this. And I feel like this is what's happening here as well. Like the land is, uh, coming back because this is, this used to be the lake, right? This used to be a massive lake. And I think that the world is just changing positions again. And I think that I believe that let's go this way and things are going to, uh, start, um, being reversed. I believe that our deserts are going to be green and they're going to be more, uh, more cooler, not as hot, not as dry. I think that we're going to have more water and it's going to rain more often as it has. It just rained the other day and we're like, we're in spring. Yeah, and I hear it's going to rain a lot more. Yeah. I mean, it, and it does rain. I'm not, I'm not saying that it does. It's just like, you know, it's, it's crazy that it rained the other day, but we're getting a lot more rain and you know, our deserts are staying more green. So I think that is, my theory is kind of coming true, man. What do you think? Yeah? I could see it. I could definitely see it. Once again, you guys, here goes the fish that uh, Altoy found, a dead fish. It can prove his theory on that pesticides and all the chemicals that are put into the uh, ground are, are, are going to be a problem. And that fish probably won't be able to survive in this lake. Uh, the birds might have issues. Gonna find fish with three eyes. Yeah, <laughs> you might find fish with three eyes. So his theory is that there's the animals here probably won't do too good for a while because there's so many pesticides, there's so many chemicals in the in what they put into the uh, plants and stuff. So into What's the. Funny though is the the guy that didn't want the interview was saying that he didn't think it would cause any problem, like the pesticides and stuff. No, was it him? Yeah, yeah. It was him? Yeah, yeah. The first dude that pulled up that didn't want the interview. So maybe he didn't want to interview you guys because he knows. he's the one who's putting the fucking chemicals into the earth. Also, if you guys didn't know, right, uh, Talari Lake, or this area right here, has sunk 30 feet from its original um, height or whatever you want to call it. So this spot, let's just say this spot, for example, used to be 30 feet higher than where it is now because of all the water that they have sucked out from the ground. So all the groundwater that is below us, all these farms and all these, you know, um, companies have sucked all the water out that this place is 30 feet lower now, which is insane. So all this water, like we said, it's another thing that goes back into, I don't know how I feel about it. It's, it could be bad. It could be good. There's a good, the good on a good note, all this water is going to, re-energize the groundwater it's gonna it's gonna bring us back up i don't know if it's ever gonna lift us back up i don't know how that works i'm not you know a geologist <laughs> yeah i'm not a fucking whatever scientist or whatnot <laughs> i can't tell you that i can't tell you if it's gonna raise us back up to the 30 feet we were at or whatever but i know that this water is obviously gonna go into the earth into the soil and it's gonna re-energize you know what we used to have so that's a good thing that's a positive note i love seeing that's one thing that I'll, i would say i will say is that i love seeing the animals here like 
just enjoying like you know the the nature where they belong man like yeah. there's birds there's birds everywhere i think we kind of scared them off with the drone so that's my bad but i'm sure they're gonna come back um because when we showed up bro there was there was guys there was birds lined all types. up all different types all this road right here was lined up with birds literally all kinds of birds like i said i seen an owl a baby owl there is so much wildlife that has came here just because of the water and it's only been a couple of months so imagine what it does in two years a year a couple of facts are um in the 1930s or 30 i believe is when um it went just completely dry jg wet what was it wet word <laughs> JG. <laughs> That's what that's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> JG uh, Balls, Balls Win. <laughs> JG Balls. <laughs> Whatever the hell his name yeah, is, that, you guys know. Guy. Yeah, that guy. You know, the, the cotton field guy. He bought all this land, right? He bought, I heard, thousands of acres of land. And he was the last person to suck up this lake dry, from what I've heard. Uh, obviously, they were doing it before him. But when he came here, he just finished it off. So um, that was in the 1930s, I believe. And then in the 1960s, 69, that guy just told us 69. I thought it was the 1960s, early 60s, but he said 69. Um, the lake came back. I don't know how much water, but it came back in the 1960s. And then it has been coming back every so often. That guy just told us, I think in the 80s, I think he said in the 70s so maybe every 10 years or whatnot i don't think to this extent though because from what i hear this is like the most that it's ever ever been since it's been dried up since like 2000 here can i get this can i get one well, actually it was 19 uh, uh 1982 1982 yeah and also like about 90 about 90 years ago too so it, it doesn't happen very often so I heard like in the uh, 60s, right? It came back? It wasn't that much. I mean, it was just a little. It was this, this is probably the highest one that we ever had. That you ever had. That's what I was thinking because I know it came back in the 60s, 69, I think. Yeah. But I don't think it was like this, this, uh, this no, much, right? it wasn't right? this much. 1982, there was a big flood, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like this. Do you think that it's gonna here to like last pretty, like this time for good or, or not? Like, do you think that the water will stay here? Like, oh, do you think that it's gonna? Years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think that if we have a snow again next year, that it's just this lake is just gonna be what it is and just gonna yeah, be here for a while? We get this much snow that we had this year, yeah. 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 It was I, fifty. It was fifty feet of snow out there in the mountains. So that's where we get all this. Fifty feet of snow. Yeah. Damn. Do you think that there's gonna be like, because there are pesticides, right, in the fields and this and that? Do you think it's gonna affect the water? No. Do you feel negative about it, or do you do you like it, or do you dislike it's totally it? It's negative. I mean, yeah. farmers they lose all their money. They're yeah. With the farm, so they get into that money. So there's going to be a lot of people out of work too. Yeah. There's lots of people that are going to be out of work. This is no good. Do you do you mind me asking? Do you work on the farms too, or no? I work right here. Oh shoot. What right what do they do there? It's a cotton gin. Oh, a cotton. Okay. Yeah. Who knows when when you guys will be back to work, huh? Yeah, well, we're not gonna run this year. Definitely, we're not gonna we're not gonna have any 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 cotton this year. But uh, hopefully, next year we have some. And can I ask you, like, what do you what are you planning to do this year? Nothing really. Nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing you really can't do huh, at nothing this point. Dang. It's a pleasure meeting you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank All you right. guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you guys were able to hear that. If you guys didn't hear it. He's a actual, uh, he worked on the farms. He worked the fields. He actually worked right there, he said. Um, it's a cotton farm. And uh, he has no idea like what he's gonna do this year for work, you know? So that kind of sucks. Back to what me and Nato were talking about. Uh, you know, I don't know if I should take it in a negative way, positive way, if feel happy for this or, or sad for it. Negative. it. Yeah, obviously he's, you know, it, it it's obviously hurting him and his family so that's what i'm talking about when i say you know i, I don't know how to feel about it because i feel like it's cool that it's here but it sucks for him and his family because he he's not gonna be able to work this year who knows what he has to do now i don't know if he's gonna have to move if you know how his family's gonna do it 
I'm glad that we ran into him to see his point of view and you know he's struggling there's people that are struggling out here that work these fields like I said he worked here at the cotton field yeah what are the odds that he works where we are standing right yeah there? what are the odds that he comes through here as we're filming and that he worked actually on the field or he works on the field you heard it from one of the locals it's a uh, we got one negative review yeah. that it's costing money for he said the farmers is costing money for him he he's not making any money for his family who knows if you know he obviously has to pay rent he lives somewhere he has to pay for food you know who knows if there is like i said out here in corcoran this is all farmland so it's not like you can go get a job you know at anywhere else there really is nowhere to work besides you know the restaurants here but there's i mean i'm sure they're all booked up and they're f full there's not really too many spots to work at so people here make money off of these these uh farmlands so when that's taken away from them i mean i guess we're gonna have to see what you know what happens i mean he might have to go travel for work who knows how far because like i said we're in corcoran i think the next big city is um bakersfield uh which is i want to say an hour away not too bad but you know if he worked locally why would he have to travel you know an hour plus away so yeah you heard it first from one of the locals we'll see who else we could find and we'll go into town see who we could talk to see if there's another negative review another positive review you know we'll go inside we'll go into town and see who we could find My name is Adam. Adam? Yes. You're the owner of the... No, I'm, I'm the manager. Oh, manager. Okay, yeah, cool. correct. How do you feel about it? Um, it's been affecting us, you know, due to the roads being closed. Well, it's not necessarily fully closed yet. Yeah. You know, but the, the signs do say it's closed. Yeah. I should say a detour, you know, that's why it's affecting us, you know, in the business. A lot of people that used to take that road don't take it anymore. They just take the detours. Um, so it's been slowing us down, you know. I see. Yeah, because we, we actually went, uh, we weren't sure if we were able to go through there, so we went around, but then we figured, because we saw a bunch of people go through there, so we're like, I mean, if everybody's going through there, you know, maybe Why we not? Go through there. So we ended up at the dead end, or where the water, you know, comes up, and um, we met with like a couple people who live out here, and they're just telling us about the same thing, road closures and all that, and uh, how it's affecting them. One guy said that uh, he works at one of the fields right here, the cotton fields and that he won't be able to work for like a year, he said. Um, have, do you know anybody like that? that, that yeah, that like guy? the local customers, you know, that come in here, they definitely tell us that they've been affected by it. You know, they don't have work. They like also the dairies, you know, there's a lot of big dairies that stop, you know, producing because they, they also been affected by the flood. Um, also homes out there, you know, yeah. that have been affected by that. Have they told you, has anybody, like the city or anybody came out here and told you, hey, the water might reach this point or this point? or anything? The city has not came and warned us, like, no? like from themselves, personally, yeah. no, but there has been, like, you know, little warning signs and online, you know, that, that alert you for the flood. Uh -huh. But personally, from the city, there, there hasn't been anything. Do you think that it will reach the water? I personally think it will. I mean, because the snow hasn't fully melted. So, you think I, feel that like, it could? I feel like it could, Damn. yeah. I mean, there's a town that's only like 25 minutes away that got affected by it. So, I, Alpa, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. So, it's like yeah. a smaller town. It's like a smaller town, correct? And they're totally underwater? They, they were underwater, correct, yeah. Oh, all right, man, well, I appreciate you. Sounds appreciate good. Your time, not a problem. Thank you. All right, guys, so we're here in Corcoran. We uh, officially came into town, the main town, and we're here at a brewery. Uh, Altoy said it was a good idea that you know, we might find some people to talk to about, you know, the, the flooding and all that stuff that's going on. So let's go inside and see who we find. I plan to succeed through the chaos. You feel me? Hey! Pillow talking on a hundred thousand. Moon walking over mountains. That's What's four hundred thousand. Yeah. So, this is Tler uh, Kings County. Uh -huh. Let me see here. They're predicting uh, for the lake. This is the city of Corcoran right here. Okay. So they're predicting. Supposedly, it's going to be the, the biggest natural lake east of the Mississippi. The program's working slow. But 
It's going to be at the edge of Corcoran. So that levee that they're building right here, just west of us, yeah. is, is what's going to supposedly stop the water from coming into town. Okay. Yeah, but they're trying to keep everything west of the levee um, between the I-5 and here. I see. And um, what you were telling us earlier about the, uh, because I know 43 was underwater for how long, you think? A month or so, maybe? A month? What, what would you say, hey, what would you say 43? Maybe a month underwater? Right, right, roughly. Some roughly. spots, yeah. It, it was starting to cross over, but they hadn't blocked it yet. Because it was tolerable. I mean, water was maybe six inches or so. But then when it rose, then they had a few people get caught out there that didn't, uh, you know, they didn't obey the signs. So they thought they can cross it. Yeah. But now that it's now that the water's gone down, they're controlling it. Now you, 43 is fully open. And how did you say that they they uh, emptied all that water? Like, how did they get all that water out of there? From my understanding, they start controlling the flow, uh -huh. holding in the dams, uh -huh. and you get it lower enough to lowered enough to where the they can start managing the the canals and cleaning debris from the all the bridges, so the water can flow. Uh, flow freely. I see. Because the problem was we got so much debris, the water would back up and it was starting to break, you know, overflow canals, rivers, break levees and stuff like that. So. I see. So, right, did they, um, because I did see actually down 43, there's just pockets of water randomly. Is right. Is that from that? Right. That's the aftermath of the flooding. Mm -hmm. But once they start getting all the all the uh, little canals and stuff like that that were crossing 43, yeah. where they can they took out the debris, took out the blockage. Yeah. Once the water start flowing freely, it, yeah. it, you know, could help control all that. And then also, uh, we were talking about off camera. Uh, you said Allensworth was even underwater, right? Close, close, right? close. The actual Allensworth little town wasn't, but the outer edges. It was, yeah, there was some flooding and stuff like that. Yeah, and and now they got it under control, for the most part. Yeah, I yeah. See, now see. now right now what they're working on is controlling and diverting the water to get it away from the town, get away from the like. Alpal was underwater and stuff like that, so they're trying to control all that right now. Where we were at on Whitley and Tent, Tent. Yeah, you said that that's twelve feet of water. Uh, on the. On the Boswell Yard, I believe so. I mean, don't quote me in the exact foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the buildings, you know, the shops and stuff, they're about up to the roofs right now. But they were also below below oh, the see, road. You know, they're, they're, they're yeah, sunk down yeah. at the fields and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, because I estimated like five foot, but like obviously you've seen where, where it was at. So you say closer to 10 maybe. Yeah, because I'm about, I'm about six foot. And where we go down to, to get water for our water trucks and stuff like that, yeah. the tank that was there was a little bit taller, nah, yeah, about a little bit taller than me, and that's underwater now. Oh shoot! Okay. So the shops, the door, the the water levels now is up past the door jams, uh, the top of the doors and all that. It's, it's taller than that. Damn. But now it it got so high that it start flowing over the road, so you can't go uh, if you try to go south on ten. Um, off of Whitley, you maybe get a half a mile and that's it. Oh, because it's already flooded. Everything's all flooded out. Yeah, water flowing over. Damn. Have you heard anything as far as like, what are, are they predicting that this lake is going to be here for good now, for a couple years, four At least years, a few years. A few years? Yeah, they're, they're, they're saying two years when we're, maybe two years when we're, we're finally going to start seeing go down. Yeah, as, as long as it, you know, the rain's if it, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, if, it, yeah. if we don't get heavy rains, it'll start going down. Well, like I was telling him, I think that if we continue with as much snow as we got this year, next year, I think that this lake is here for keep going. a couple of years. Yes, yes. So this is the most rainfall, snowfall this area has ever gotten. I see. So between what we're getting, you know, back, e uh, you know, east of us on the mountains, the, the water flow coming this way. Yes, this is the most we've ever gotten in years. Do you think that, kind of how she was joking around, do you think that it could possibly be like lakefront property now? Do you think that we, we might get to that stage where this might even I, be- I don't, I don't, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh-huh. But this is also a high agricultural area, so 
they want their farmland back. Exactly. So it depends. I mean, you know how politics runs. Yeah. So it just depends because that was all prime, prime uh, area to grow. You know, uh, your tomatoes. Uh, you had pistachios, almonds. Uh, shoot, you name it. It was just I'll a variety. Them. Yes, not not too much that way. Okay. But alfalfa too, you okay. know. What I mean? But there was a little bit of everything. I see. From yeah, so so we also talked to someone who pulled up over there. Uh, he said that he actually worked on the uh, cotton farm right there, right right on uh, on Whitney. Uh, he said that he's out of work for about a year or two. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of the farmers are trying to find trying to find work. For, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the seasonal workers, yeah, they're, they're, there's going to be no work for them. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we got, there's so much, so much uh, uh, farmland that's being underwater, that's, yeah. that's underwater right now that, you know. So what do they do? Like, in, in your, like, what would you think that they're going to do? What is the, what else is there to do around in this area or what, what can they possibly do? Besides farming, not much. I mean, the dairies, the dairies have, have reduced reduced down so much in these areas you know a lot of a lot of laborers we either go farming or go dairy and even that's it's it's hard it's hard to get people for now i mean not get people for yeah. but have jobs open yeah, to yeah. take you know to take a job but do uh do people work like in bakersfield or like fresno do they travel yes. to work yeah. yes yeah we uh yeah we you know, as a company, we we have subcontractors. They would come over here. They do their jobs here. We have, you know, you'd have Wasco here on uh, Layton, all these areas that they would come over here to work. I see. So it could affect them. Are, are you a local? Do you live here? Or? Yes. Yeah. How long have you lived here? Uh, about twenty years. Twenty years? Oh shoot. Okay. I'm originally from Tulare, but so, so have you seen like the like the uh, town grow or? Is it pretty much the same, or has it grown? Bigger? It's grown a little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's steady growth, but it just, yeah. It's a lot of the a lot of the farm laborers are going to suffer now because of this. I see. You know, and you know, nothing anybody can do, but it's just, yeah. What what's happened? Oh yeah. What is that? Chopped cheese. Chopped cheese? Well, chopped oh, shit. Oh, okay, okay. You got your beef all chopped up with just a bunch of seasoning, cheese. All that, not, not on the menu. <laughs> Secret menu. Secret menu. <laughs> you handle yeah. it, you handle it with Pete. Heck yeah. One of the lovely locals has offered me a half shot of pistachio moonshine. I promise I'll be able to film it, Andy. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Pistachio. Thank you, man. More famous. It. Yes, no problem, dude. What is this? Pistachio, pistachio moonshine. moonshine. Yeah, the series no. That was delicious. Wow, delicious but dangerous. <laughs> wow, I could tell that that's dangerous. That's proof right there. Wow, I'm gonna I'm I'm send you a video of him on the way home. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we knocked out. You <laughs> got the teddy bear and shit. Delicious. Was it man. good? Really good. It tastes like you probably could have downed it and wouldn't even have noticed that there was liquor in it. I think you'll feel it in a bit. <laughs> oh, <I'm sure. laughs> Cheers to that. Feel me, brother. Hey. All right, you guys see me, man. On Thank you, guys. Moon walking over mountains. That's 400 ounces. When I was younger, I prayed for this power. I just wish they would have told me this don't come with flowers. All right, guys. It's Danny with Playground. We finished up. We've been chasing the flood waters all day. We've been chasing um, the waters, literally from from one side of Corcoran to the other side of Corcoran. We met with some cool locals. We uh, hit a brewery. Uh, that was Altoy's idea. <laughs> we met some cool ass people, man. So we met with the guy who's been here for 20 years at the brewery. He talked to us about, you know, what's going on in the floodwaters and how we were actually wrong about how deep the water was. I thought it was like five feet. He said it's about uh, 10 to 12 feet. So it's actually deeper than what we thought. Um, and then he also told us about uh, Highway 43, which we're on right now, on the way home. 
He said that it was actually underwater not even a um, couple of weeks ago. So they cleaned everything out. All the water is gone now. You can come through the uh, 43, uh, Highway 43. So yeah, you got access to come in and out of Cork right now. He's just talking to us about uh, one family out here. I guess they're a big local uh, farming family that their house is literally underwater. Like their house, he showed us pictures. I don't know if I got, I, I was able to get it on camera, but he showed us that the house is literally like to the roof of water. And it's insane, bro. And, the, and that was the house that their uh, parents lived in. So it was like a generational house and it's it's gone, it's underwater. So um, we have met with, um, you know, just people in the community. And uh, from what we're taking from it is that it's actually a very negative thing, man. It's ruining a lot of people's lives as far as they can't work anymore. Uh, they're not going to be able to pay their bills. They're not going to be able to eat. Like, like they said, there's people fighting against them that are saying, oh, yeah, you know, but this is, you know, nature. This is what uh, this is what it should be, you know. But at the same time, they were born into this farming community and that's all that they know. I guess there is no right or wrong. It's just that it's a really sad situation. And uh yeah but it was a uh, it was an awesome day we uh like i said we met with some locals some really cool cool locals they they gave us a scoop on everything even the scoop on uh the violence here on in the corcoran that we can get into maybe on another story because uh corcoran is a very very small town right there's a lot of uh gang violence but it's 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 very sad i guess because it's a very small small town for it to have that much violence um also um you know just with the what he was telling us about uh 10 years ago how how it was with homeless there's literally a role of homeless people at the parks and he said 10 years ago there was not there was maybe one person two person two people that that they knew from uh from just just the town now there's homeless people that they never even seen before that just came out of nowhere and he said that that's part of the the la problem he says that they literally are sending people out here and just giving them one-way tickets out here and we're glad that they were able to share you know what they shared and and like i said maybe we'll if you guys are really interested in that story maybe we'll come back and see all the you know gang violence the country boys the uh the farmers there's like he said there's businessmen there's country boys and then there's fucking uh uh gangs so there's those three big groups out here in corcoran so it's pretty political out here that being said um it's a, it's a sad story of, of people losing their jobs, people losing their farms, people losing generations of, of just of what their family has built. So uh, this was Danny with Playground. Thank you guys for coming with me on this journey. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Million dollar meetings now, millions now. Niggas think I'm changing because I ain't bring them. You wouldn't understand. You ever seen a hundred million dollars? Huh? Nigga, me neither. So how the fuck could you tell me to play my...